Up next is Building a Strong Foundation by Sister Noor Syed. Um, Noor Syed is an electronics engineer turned homeschool mom of two boys. She is enjoying every moment of her role as a stay-at-home mother or, um, or home educator for the past six years. Um, she firmly believes in simplifying education and following the child. More of this can be found on her blog at simplifyhomeschool.com. So please welcome Sister Noor Syed. So let's begin with a question. Do you guys think there's a difference between education and schooling? A quick show of hands. Yes? Yeah, I think there's a difference. Uh, uh, what I understand from the presentation or what we are saying that staying in the United States or not, or what we have studied, the way we have studied, the purpose of education is to do home schooling. Okay. Okay. No, it is good. It's good. Anybody else? Can we use the words uh, education and schooling interchangeably? A lot of people do that, right? That's how it is in our heads. I have, uh, I have pulled up the definitions of the two words, and actually there is a slight difference. Okay, so from what I remember of the definition, education is the process of acquisition of knowledge, information gathering, development of skills, habits, and values and beliefs. And schooling is a method. It's a place which gives you, which teaches you these things through experiences. So a school recreates experiences for you, creates re experiences for you to learn and achieve education. So it's a means, it's not the end itself. And education is the end goal. So our goal is education, not schooling. Schooling is a means. And you can see there are more arrows going and achieving education because it's not, schooling is not the only means. We get educated in several ways. Okay, so see schooling as a means. So we have a lot of resources available to us as home educators, and we can recreate these experiences to achieve education. There is a lot available to us. The, there is no limit. Actually, we happen to live in the most homeschool-friendly state in the most homeschool-friendly country. So, and this, this is probably the best time to homeschool because 20 years ago, these kind of programs didn't exist. Right now, if you go to any museum, any arboretum, zoo, any place, they all offer semester-long programs for you to you know, avail of their programs and services. There are people who have understood that you know, there is, this is a big market. There is a huge population homeschooling right now, and they offer programs for us to acquire these skills. Even for high school, which seems to be the common concern, and I know Sister Julie is going to go in detail with that, there's a lot of um, uh, options like community colleges, professionals who offer you know, work experience. Even schools like Harvard offer like online programs for us to avail of. So how do we build a strong home school education environment in our homes? The first thing is the approach. How we see education is the most important thing. So one of the first things that goes wrong with most of us, is that we start creating a school at home. And when we do that, we are setting ourselves up for failure or disappointment because it's simply a completely uh, you know, different environment. It's never going to be like a school. The dynamics are completely different. And when we do that, what ends up happening is we often get frustrated. Or even if we do create a school-like environment, everybody burns out pretty quickly. The other thing that happens is we end up trading off all the benefits that come with home education and we import all the problems and challenges that a school setting faces. That's really unnecessary. So we have to look at it from a completely different perspective. Another thing that commonly happens is we try to match the hours and the schedule of a school. So we will try to do all the subjects every day, have half hour intervals and you know, like, Imagine that we need to do six hours of school every day and desk work and you know things like that. But that is 
that is going to take the entire beauty and the, the freedom that home education affords us away from us. And it really reduces us to um, a very substandard um, result. We have to look at homeschooling as a foundation for life. So think large and think far ahead. These are the two things that we should keep in mind. Imagine homeschool as not a cog in the wheel or, a, or a, a step that comes before college. In fact, these are the prime years when our children grow intellectually, physically, and emotionally. So we should develop them to their full potential, uh, preserve what is naturally good in them, and give them a chance to develop their personalities to the fullest. And by thinking long term, I mean we have to build values morals and character which will serve them not just in this life but in the next life inshallah so we all know that academic success does not mean that a person is going to live a happy life or they are going to be morally upright we read in the newspapers you know harvard student did something shameful and you know you're just like and then in the courts people make arguments oh he was a straight a student but you know kind of like defense of the person, but that does not make sense. Our religion does not judge us based on our academic or worldly success. We have to strive to be excellent people, inshallah, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We get to teach our children not just the what to do, but why to do things. Our religion emphasizes niya. It is the basis of our final judgment. So you would have a person who has done amazing things in life and everybody agrees that this is a great person, but they're doomed for hell just because of their niya. So when we are with our children in our homes, we get to build that niya. Like many a times we see there is some kid who's volunteering and you know doing community service and their real reason to do all that is just for it to look good on their resume or their college application. It's not really to serve the community. So that's not, that's not the, the idea why we are home educating. Inshallah, we have to develop the niya in them and them spending time with us gives us that opportunity, inshallah. Knowledge itself is not enough. We know what to do, but sometimes we don't do it. So it's not the knowledge which makes us do better things. If knowledge was enough, shaitan wouldn't be in trouble, right? He probably knows much more than any of us here about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what, do, what, are we, what is it that needs to develop in the children, inshallah? What we need to develop is the will to do good, the willingness to choose the right thing. And that happens, inshallah, through love, care, good teaching, companionship, friendship, and you know, influencing our children by living our deen in the best possible way. Inshallah, this is actually the way the Prophet wasallam taught his companions. This was his way. He was gentle, he was following the deen, he was living Quran, and he was soft on them. He was nice and gentle and loving with them. In fact, the Quran says, I think it's in Surah Al-Imran, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that surely you would have, if it's from the mercy of Allah that he made Prophet Sallallahu gentle and you know, easygoing. If he was not, they would have surely left you. you know, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So then when we have children in our company, we have to choose a more gentle approach, inshallah. There is a video that I really wanted everybody to see, a small clip.
So the video goes on for, a, for some more time. But I will um, continue with my presentation. I'm really short on time, and I have a ton of things to cover. So please excuse me if I go too fast. But what do we learn from this video? Yes. Yes. So if you have more than one child, you would know that even if you have the same environment that in which you know they are children of the same family, they are getting nurtured in the same way, you're raising them in the same way, but they have distinctly different personalities. Even as an infant, you can see the difference between your children, right? So children are unique, human beings are unique, and Allah made this world. Um, I think we are all meant to complement each other. There are some things that we all have to do, but then other than that, beyond that, we all have to bring whatever skills, whatever gifts Allah has given us to serve and contribute in this world. That's how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you know, chose tasks for his companions. There were so many people who came to him and asked him the same question. Ya Rasulullah, how do I how do I get to Jannah? What should I do? Tell me one thing that I should do to get to Jannah. And he always gave a different answer. Why would he give a different answer? Think about it. He gave different answers because he was looking at the questioner. This person has these challenges, these skills, these you know, positives and negatives, and he, his advice was based on the person he was giving the advice to. And here we are, as a, as a home educator or school, even, even homeschoolers sometimes, even if they are, not ho uh, they are not sending their child to school, they are stuck in that school mindset. They are still stuck with the K-12 mindset that these 12 years, I have to exactly do as much, you know, as a school-like setting as possible, you know, school them, as close to the school setting as possible because we're too afraid, right? But our children are unique. Their needs are unique. Their strengths are unique. Everything is unique about them. So, so the, the motto should be personalizing the education. Inshallah, we have to see where our children are developmentally, first of all, how their personalities are, and then cater to those needs. That is the best way to leverage on this beautiful, opportunity that we have in front of us, inshallah. We should feel free to choose curricula or grade level, even grade level, uh, to see where the student is. There are times that you know you would feel as a home educator that, oh, the child is at home, I have all these hours, I can, I can teach this and this and I can do four different math curriculums and five different science curriculums and he's gonna be, he's going to ace it and he's going to skip grades and he's gonna just fly, basically. But what is the price we are paying when we do that, there is something else which is going to be taken away. Some kids are not developmentally ready and we push things. Just because they are supposed to be at, you know, at a certain grade level, it's not uncommon among home educators that you know, our children, sometimes with some subjects, they will be a grade ahead. With some subjects, they may be a grade behind. And that's okay. I want all of us to relax and just trust the process. As long as we are consistent, and we are dedicated, inshallah, they will learn what they need to learn, inshallah. There is a history of age segregated schooling. I really don't have the time to get into it, but if anybody wants to know, you can ask me at the question and answer time, and I'll tell you how this came about, inshallah. We are, okay. So there is a lot of other advice here, but I'm going to skip ahead and talk about the next point. Preserve what is good in them. Children, have certain tendencies that, that can be very irritating to us. Like, you know, they ask questions and they like to see things in a different way. And then we're like, how did you think about that? Like, what are you talking about? You know, things like that. But actually these are their gifts. Like divergent thinking or looking at a situation, a scenario in a completely different way is a gift. And probably in the future, the people who have these skills, people who have these skills, will be at an advantage. So we want to preserve this uh, in them, inshallah. So let them play, you know, the best way to preserve it is let them play, let them think outside the box, let them tinker around, let them do something that, that fancies them, not what fancies you and me, inshallah. So another point is, you know, don't push too many instructions, don't dictate what they should do every single minute of the day. You know, inshallah, when we give them less instructions, 
something comes out of them, you know, they, they think their own problems and then they think of the solutions themselves, inshallah. Put them in the driver's seat. Let them decide what resources they want to use, how they want to spend their day and how they want to work. I am not saying that this should be the only thing they do in the day. There should be some structured work and there should be some structured uh, lessons and stuff, but don't let that be the entire day. Choose few hours for that. See, we are very efficient as, uh, you know, because we are doing one-on-one -on -one instruction. We get done with stuff, even if you want to focus on your core subjects like math and language arts, which should be done every day, you would be done with them within a few hours. Like what would take a school several hours, you would be done in an hour actually. You know, so use the rest of the time, inshallah, to provide them resources, be like a facilitator rather than, you know, dictating what they should do. And oftentimes the lines will blur between work and play, but respect the play that they do. That is work. That is work because, you know, there's a lot of research. I have uh, written an article for MHE uh, about play. Inshallah, you can go and see it if you, especially if you have a young child, that should be, uh, you know, we should allow them to play. It really develops them and makes them developmentally ready for the future lessons that's gonna, you know, take all, they need to use that brain architecture has to develop for them to, like they say, true reading doesn't happen unless the brain, the both hemispheres of the brain are coordinated, for example. And we push reading lessons early on and we don't let them play, but when they're playing, all of those connections are getting stronger and they're getting ready for these kind of academic work, inshallah. Another thing is that, you know, give less instruction. So what do you do? For example, if you can avoid giving them writing prompts and like line paper, don't give them that. Give them like blank paper. Let them use their imagination. Let them just think of original ideas. Let them decide what they want to write about or what they, if they want to draw a picture, that's fine. Just Choose things within the day where they get to choose what they want to write about. Because any great person in history, if you look at them, they were able to pursue a problem with grit and resilience for a long period of time. And nobody told them the question. I don't think uh, anybody asked Einstein, tell me the theory of relativity. That was his original idea. He thought about it, right? It wouldn't happen if, these things cannot happen if, if somebody else is constantly imposing that on the person. It has to come from within, inshallah. So there's some more advice, but I'm going to again skip ahead. Inspire. We have to understand that we are at a huge advantage in terms of the amount of time we have and the amount of freedom that we have, we enjoy. So we should literally stretch the boundaries and imagine the whole world as our classroom and make learning a lifestyle for your family. Inshallah. It will not happen instantly. Gradually you will learn this and it's not just me. All of my friends here who are homeschooling, they all have this lifestyle and they are, the children are thriving, the families are happy, they all get to bond and it's amazing. So you can travel, you can you know, explore people and meet people from different cultures, you can do local trips and you can go to events, you can expose them to new experiences. What this does is it contextualizes the learning experiences. What the life experiences actually contextualize everything that we are learning. I'll give you an example. So we went to uh, a national park a few months, a few, yeah, a few months ago, and we actually got to see the rock cycle or like the weathering, how it happens just by a waterfall. Because we could see the boulders, we could see the gravel, we could see the dirt, we could see the sand, and we could see how actually it's weathering. The waterfall is actually weathering it and you know um yeah <laughs> so i have only five minutes left and i really have to jump ahead inshallah okay so what is another thing which is important for us inshallah our relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is 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 the most important thing because we cannot do this without his help so when the command to the prophet ﷺ was given to go and preach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also commanded him to increase his worship. So imagine somebody has more work to do, more challenging work to do, and Allah is commanding him to do stand up in the night even more. Because when we take up higher goals, we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even more. So don't ever let your busyness and you know, your homeschool stuff take over your spirituality. 
I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to go and do some academic studies in the deen and everything. What you're doing is ibadah with your children. Just renew your niyyah every day, inshallah, that this is going to be uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And focus on your worship too, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that those who exert their breast foot, Allah will surely guide them to his way. And indeed, Allah is standing next to those who seek excellence. So we have Allah with us in this, inshallah. Inshallah. So don't worry, Inshallah. Just keep going and become more process oriented rather than result oriented because you may not see the results. If we become too fixated with the results, we may actually make more mistakes. So don't look for outcomes. Focus on the process, Inshallah. And know that Allah is in control. He got this and trust Him and just keep going with it, Inshallah. I wanted to talk about socialization too, but how much time do you have? Four minutes? Okay. Not bad. Okay. So socialization. This is like, <laughs> that's why I said the S word. Because uh, for homeschoolers, it's like the dreaded word, right? Anybody talks about socialization. Oh, how are you going to prepare your child for, the, for life? That's what we usually hear, right? So I have a question. Whatever is your age, you don't have to tell me. But how much, in a typical week, how much time do you spend with people of that exact same age? So, uh, I don't mind telling my age. I'm 35 years old. I don't hang out with 35 year olds. I barely see 35 year olds. So what does that say? My, all those years, school years, college years of, you know, spending time with 30, uh, no, back then, whatever was my age, that prepared me for life? It gave me socialization skills, but very specific kind of socialization skills. That is good too. It is important to know how to relate with your peers. It's good, it's important, but is that the only thing that matters? When I was considering homeschooling um, in 2012, I was working at the time and I actually did an exercise. For one full week, I watched how much I interact with people of my age and my coworkers were not my age. My child was not my age. My husband's not my age. My parents are not my age. My siblings are not my age. I have a few friends who are my age, but that's how much time do I spend with them? So living in a society, let's say socialization is being able to survive in a society, live in a society, adapt to a society, learn the norms of a society. Is that, uh, is that gonna really teach me that? Shouldn't we have like a broader understanding of socialization and expose our children to interact with as many age groups and people as possible? Now home education gives us that. I take my children to even some of the you know, non-Muslim festivals because I want to be the one exposing them to that. I want them to know there are people who do these things and they are different from us, but we can respect them. We don't have much in common with them, but yeah, they exist and we have to kind of know how to handle ourselves in the society. I take them for museum programs where, you know, they go for hikes every week and they hang out with non-Muslims, but, you know, that's, that's socialization. And letting them spend time with my in-laws, let's say, is teaching them something far more important, how to take care of family members, how to be nice to them. If they were stuck in school, probably they would not be able to spend that much time with them. Or, for example, you know, even when we go out and interact with our neighbors and stuff, that's socialization. So I have, we have to broaden our understanding of all of these things which are thrown at us constantly and understand that, you know, that's a very restricted meaning of socialization. Our religion has socialization built into it. If we come to the masjid five times a day and we come for Juma, and if we uh, are active in our communities, we get socialized. And we have personally experienced this, me and my husband. We have seen that, um, you know, a couple of years ago, we made the decision to be more, uh, you know, attached to the masjid. So it just happens, you know, you don't have to come here and live here. You just have to come here for prayers. The kids will meet uncles and aunties and everybody, and they'll know how to talk to them, say salam to them and, you know, things like that. And as far as relating with peers, that also happens. There are toast, there's like Toastmasters club, there's debate clubs, there's book clubs, there's, there's like 
we have a co-op, for example, you can get together with a few people, you know, like-minded people and create those environments. Even a playground is a much better social environment than a classroom because, you know, you are meeting the same people again and again and you have the same um, setting. So I'm totally out of time, but <laughs> I'm just going to go one minute, okay, and just finish this up. Okay, another thing is there should be a grit and discipline taught to the children. So things like chores, prayers, or you know, any kind of habits, especially with like skill-based subjects like language arts and math, yes, you want to teach them to take ownership of their work and do daily work, inshallah. But the point is that should not overtake the entire day. And it, it really gets done very quickly, inshallah. Another point is your relationship with your child is very important. This is actually at the heart of it. So do not ever compromise your relationship in the process of you know, home educating your child, inshallah. Because home education is essential in extension of parenting. It's, um, it's like a natural progression. Like Those of us who homeschool have decided that we will remain the full-time parent or teacher beyond five years of age. Because some of us decided that after five, their education is somebody else's responsibility. And we all know, even if those of us who send the children to the school, it never becomes somebody else's responsibility. You still have to be on top of it, and you have to work hard, and it's the same kind of work. It's just a slightly different kind of work. I would say home education is more fun. One last point before I go. The children need to be feeling you know, comfortable in the homes. So please do not fill their day with checklists. I have gone through phases when I made these mistakes, and I'm telling you from my personal experience that when we do that, the children really, uh, you know, just because they are available and with us all day long and we have ambitions, we should not fill up the day with, you know, this task and that's a, that task and, you know, this class and that class. They need downtime. And home is the place where everybody should feel comfortable. Okay? So... And also apologizing to the kids when we make mistakes because that teaches them that they have to turn back to Allah and humble themselves and, you know, it also normalizes making mistakes and seeking forgiveness. So I think that's about it, inshallah. I hope this was beneficial to you guys. Jazakallah, careful listening to me. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum.